witness, you have been called here in your capacity as an attesting or authenticating official, not in your capacity as an expert witness. That was established yesterday afternoon. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes. If you recall, I emphasized this point yesterday because the main difference between an ordinary witness and a, an expert witness is this. An expert witness is allowed to testify on his opinion. He is allowed to sway the jury or the judge by what he says because he is an expert. But we already clarified yesterday, you are not called here as an expert witness, but simply as an attesting officer. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. I ask this, please do not feel insulted. Simply so that we will know whether you understand the terms that sometimes we have a predilection for inside the courtroom. So, yesterday, you are not drawing any conclusions or expressing any opinions, were you? You are only presenting documents and you were saying, these are the documents that are on file in the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Yes, ma'am. Were you saying, were you in any way implying or saying that any of those entries in the documents that you brought with you were stating falsities or were stating the truth? Did you imply any, any truth or falsehood with respect to those entries? Or did you just testify that these are the entries as they are reflected in our records? Uh, these are, I testified as to these are the entries as submitted to us by the taxpayer. That is correct. Because, to repeat, you are not qualified, you are not qualified as an expert witness, and therefore you have no business expressing your opinion or drawing conclusions. You can simply read out of the document or recite them if they are memorized. Yes, ma'am. Good, very good. Now we understand each other. So, may I please add my comment now, Mr. President. The problem at this instance of our trial is that the presumption of unexplained wealth when the income and the assets do not tally, meaning to say the assets are so much far more, far more in value than the income, this is a presumption that is laid down in the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Instead, maybe it was a congressional oversight, it should have been included in the, in the separate law, which is called the Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards, which is devoted mostly to the filing of the SAL-N. I'm not directing this to you, witness. I'm simply explaining myself. That is why we're a little confused here. Now remember, this is only a prima facie, or as the Filipinos say, prima facie evidence lang yon. Pag hindi sila nagtugma, prima facie, Ay di, ninakaw niya siguro yun, bakit ang dami-dami niyang pag-aari, konti lang palang kinikita niya. But that is only a presumption. That is only prima facie presumption. It can be impeached, meaning to say, it can be overthrown, or it can be defeated by evidence to the country. Just for your, elu for your elucidation. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, sen may I move that uh, Senator Joker Arroyo be recognized? The gentleman from Makati. Uh,